Who was Baal, and why was the worship of Baal a constant struggle for the Israelites? Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 5. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. When the Israelites left Egypt for the Promised Land, they got to Mount Sinai, where God gave them the Ten Commandments to guide their conduct in the land they were to inherit. The first commandment God gave the Israelites, and reiterated the most, was the command not to worship idols or bow down to any graven image. God instructed the Israelites not to intermarry with the pagan nations around them, but to avoid their worship practices. One of the reasons why God instructed them to do this was in order to guide them to avoid the sin of idolatry. But the Israelites broke all these laws before they got to the land of Canaan. It doesn't take an extensive read-through of the Old Testament to note the pervasive influence of idolatry in Israel's history. In Exodus chapter 32, while Moses was on the mountain with God, the Israelites reared up a golden calf and made sacrifices to it. Still in the wilderness, the Israelites had sexual affairs with the women of Moab and worshipped their gods. Numbers chapter 25 verses 1 through 2. While Israel was staying in Shittim, the men began to indulge in sexual immorality with Moabite women, who invited them to the sacrifices to their gods. The people ate the sacrificial meal and bowed down before these gods. God raised a prophet named Hosea and used his marriage to depict how Israel had forsaken him to cleave to other gods. Gomer, who was Hosea's wife, was the unfaithful wife of Hosea the prophet. The Lord used Hosea and Gomer's relationship as an object lesson to show how Israel had sinned against him by following other gods and how God remains faithful even when his people don't. Hosea represented God and his promiscuous wife represented the Israelites. Of all the gods Israel was drawn to worship, none had a greater influence on them than Baal. The Israelites constantly struggled to stop the worship of Baal despite the warnings God gave them through the prophets. Who is Baal? Why was it difficult for the Israelites to stop worshiping it? In addition to the lessons we can learn from the idolatrous practices of Israel, we will provide answers to these questions from the scriptural perspective. Baal is a Canaanite god worshipped by ancient Phoenicians and Canaanites. He was regarded as a supreme male deity who aided fertility and had power over rain, wind, and cloud. The female goddess Ashtoreth is considered to be the wife of Baal. It is believed that Baal has the ability to deliver people, animals, and crops from sterility and death. The Israelites began to worship him alongside the pagan nations around them after the death of Joshua, at the time Judges ruled Israel. Judges chapter 2 verses 10 through 11 says, And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of Lord, and served Balaam. Now the question is, why was the worship of Baal a constant struggle for the Israelites? There were factors responsible for the strong attraction the Israelites had for the worship of Baal. Some of these factors were induced by the Israelites, while some were innate in the religious rites involved in the worship of Balaam. 1. The worship of Baal involved ritual prostitution. One of the leading causes of Israel's attachment to the worship of Baal is the sexual pleasure they derive from it. Since the worship of Baal encouraged temple prostitution, it was a new religion that fostered sexual freedom among the Israelites. 
A suitable scriptural reference for this is Numbers chapter 25, verse 1 through 3, which records the events at Baal Peor. Numbers chapter 25, verse 1 through 3. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods, and the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. At that time, an Israelite called Zimri brought a Midiantish woman into the tent. He did this while Moses and the rest of the Israelites wept for their sins. In Numbers chapter 25, verses 6 through 8. When Phinehas saw them, he went with a javelin and killed them in the tent. This was viewed as a righteous act because Phinehas was viewed to have stopped the plague. Numbers chapter 25, verses 6 through 8. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brethren a Midiantish woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. When Phinehas and the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand, and he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. What Zimri did with this Midiantish woman is an especially offensive example of the sin that was happening all around Israel. But first and foremost, the Israelites found it hard to quit the worship of Baal because it was a practice that appealed to the flesh. Sex was dignified and temple prostitution was a norm. The worship of Baal was a religion that appealed to the works of the flesh. It was a religion of pleasure, a religion of sin. Archaeological excavations have produced exhumed statues with sexual features depicting sexual arousal. Moreover, we know that feasting, dancing, and music set the mood of sexual immorality. The fertility dance of the worshiper of Baal, especially by the temple prostitutes, was seductive. Most likely, at the end of the erotic dances, they retreated to Baal's temple for sexual relations. This is closely linked to what happened when the Israelites molded a golden calf and worshipped it. Exodus chapter 32 verse 6 And they rose up early on the morrow, and offered burnt offerings, and brought peace offerings, and the people sat down to eat and to drink, and rose up to play. Sexual immorality is one of the baits used by the devil to allure people from God. When it is introduced into a worship system, it is more difficult to resist. It appeals to the carnal man, the fleshly man. You cannot save this body. This was one of the reasons the Israelites could hardly free themselves from Baal. They enjoyed the pleasure he afforded them, the pleasure he offered their flesh. 2. The desire of the Israelites to become like other nations. National peer pressure was another leading factor in Israel's attachment to Baal. The nations around them worshipped Baal, so they did not want to operate under a different mode of worship. Israel loved to imbibe foreign cultures. This is evident in the fact that they demanded a king. They wanted Samuel to appoint a king over them like other nations. 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 5, And said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king, and judge us like all nations. However, the people of Israel had no genuine reason for demanding a king. They just wanted to follow the structural settings of other nations' governments. That was the same issue they had when it came to worship. They wanted to be like other nations. 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 19-20 through 20 says, Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us, that we also may be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us, and go up before us and fight our battles. It seemed as if Israel didn't understand that God set them apart for his special purpose. If they wanted the type of governmental organization of other nations, no doubt the next step for them was to wish to worship the same God as them. The high places and shrines of the Canaanites, located on mountainous wooded groves, must have fascinated the Israelites. The supreme God, 
who brought them out of slavery is invisible. However, the Israelites desired a physical God like those of the Canaanites. They loved the ritual practices carried out in the Canaanite shrines. Before long, the Israelites could not endure the fascinating sight of the Canaanite groves. They began to build their own high places. 1 Kings chapter 14, verses 22 through 23 says, And Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord, and they provoked him to jealousy with their sins, which they had committed above all that their fathers had done. For they also built them high places and images and groves on every high hill and under every green tree. 3. The Desire for Prosperity The children of Israel were not just drawn to a beautifully molded god or carved image. They worshipped Baal in expectation of the blessings they would receive. For the nations who worshipped Baal, he was the one who brought the rain and caused the bountiful harvest. The Israelites joined the pagan worshippers to believe there will be plenty of food, the rivers will flow with honey, and mothers will deliver their children safely if Baal is appeased. So the prosperity of the Canaanites probably allured them to serve Baal also. As the Canaanite idol, Baal was thought to be the god over the weather and nature for the Canaanites. He was essentially the god of agricultural success. In an agricultural society, people served Baal because they wanted good weather for abundant crops and flocks. In other words, Baal controlled the stock market and economy of their time. No wonder Ahab went to marry the daughter of the priest of Baal, Jezebel, and built a house for Baal in order to bring blessings to his kingdom. Israel must have erroneously believed their affinity with Baal would bring bountiful blessings. They did not totally forsake God. They only wanted to worship both him and Baal. The Israelites glued themselves to Baal. They held him with one hand and held God with the other. However, Elijah's ministry to the Israelites was to prove that the Lord is one God. The common ground between worship of Baal and today's society. The Babylonian captivity marked the end of Israel's worship of Baal, when Cyrus declared their freedom after 70 years. After the exile, there was no mention of the worship of Baal in Israel anymore. Although the worship of Baal has long ceased, there is a common ground between the then Canaanites' worship and today's society. The common ground is sexual pervasion and idolatry in a new form. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1 says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Today, seducing spirits are still at work. They are alluring people into a new form of idolatrous practice. Idolatry has long transformed from the worship of graven images. Today, people worship themselves, wealth, beauty, fame, power, and positions. They prioritize the things of this world above God. Sexual perversion is a leading sin in our society today. What we have now is worse than what the Canaanites practiced when Baal was being worshipped. What we need to do as believers in our day is continue to worship the one true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob.